morning guys and girls well it's been a while since I made a video so I am going to shoot some footage today it has been insane as far as mowing goes we have been going like crazy every day it's like 8 in the morning till 7 7 30 at night and uh, I hope the season's been great for you guys as well we got a very slight bit of rain yesterday or last night throughout the night it's supposed to rain a whole bunch today and I'm praying that it does because we are huh, last week of May and some of my yards are already drying out um, which isn't good because it's only a matter of time now before people will call and say hey uh, don't mow this week uh, we don't need you and then I lose money so that's not a good thing but some things have changed um, I have uh, the X Mark Zero turn has been down. It has had an issue <clears throat> where it doesn't want to start. And I've gone through everything. I've checked every relay. Every relay seems to be fine. I have, thanks to YouTube, found videos on how to test certain relays, safety switches, things like that. I've tested them. They all seem to be fine. I thought the solenoid was shot. I had a spare brand new one. I put that on. And that one is uh, still. I'm having an issue. I turn the key and I have power to the solenoid, but then no power going from the starter solenoid to the starter itself. So um, that would usually be the solenoid would be the problem. And even though I put a brand new one on, it doesn't mean the brand new one wasn't shit because uh, you can buy brand new parts all the time and they're still crap when you get them um, faulty. But uh, so I found another. Uh, another way to test to see if it's actually a solenoid or the key switch well it appears now that it's the key switch so I ordered a new one it should be here what the hell is today today's Wednesday it should be here tomorrow I'm thinking um, I had a couple spares but even though they look the same and the plugs look the same on the bottom the posts are not the same they're different for a lot of different mowers and I didn't know that and I put on a couple spares I had and it still didn't work so I thought it wasn't the key switch and turns out that very well may still be the issue so I'm hoping when the new one comes in that this will take care of the problem and I will have my X mark back um, I really need that zero turn I sold the stander um, the stander I had um, I did really well on that <clears throat> I paid 700 for that stander I got it super cheap a year ago and I that that mower made me a ton of money a ton of money um, I put maybe 500, 600 into it, and I sold it for 2,100. So do the math. I made out very well. Um, the green button hydro walk behind the head. I paid 600 for that two years ago. I think I made a ton of money with that mower too. Um, other than general maintenance, oil change, plugs, fuel filter, things like that. Um, the only thing I bought for that was a $200 grass catcher. And I turned around and sold that for 700 so I did well on that one too. I also sold my 32-inch walk-behind belt drive, which I paid 300 for a year ago. I used it, I think, one time, and then never used it again. I found it was much easier to just use the push mower um, and much easier to trailer that around in the 32, things like that. And then I sold that for 400 so I made out on that one too. Um, but um, some of you guys are probably wondering, why the hell did you sell all these mowers? Well, I'll tell you why. Um, this is what I did. I bought this here. Yeah, I know it looks a little dirty, but it is the, oh yeah, I welded this cage on here. I built this cage. This is the cage I built for that other trailer, if you guys watched, which I'm not using that trailer. So I cut it off there, and then I just, I welded it in to this trailer. So I'm using it on here now, but this is what I bought. If you guys can see it, it's a front wheel drive Toro. The other push mower that I had um, was not self propelled, um, and I really wanted a self propelled one, so I bought this one. Not bad, I got it on sale at uh, Home Depot actually for like $249. It was normally like $289 or $299, it was on sale, so I bought that, uh, which that's been phenomenal. And here you go, guys. This is We'll zoom in on James here mowing with my new mower. This is what I bought. <clears throat> it is a Husqvarna. It's a Z248F. Now, some of you guys are probably thinking, wow, that's a tiny little mower. This is what I wanted. 
I needed something that still had a 48 inch deck, something that had a fabricated deck because I didn't want a stamp deck. There he is again. I didn't want a stamp deck. I wanted a fabricated deck, obviously a commercial deck. But I wanted it in a small, tight little package. <laughs> I know that sounds funny. Um, so that I could get in and out of a lot of areas. Um, the problem I was having, that, that little thing is nice. Um, it mows great. I uh, came with high lift blades and I put gator blades on it just like I do with all my mowers so I can mulch everything up. And uh, they just seem to work much better for me. Everyone has their preference. But um, that is, we got, let's see, we got Max over here on the Ferris Hydro. Um, but what I'm getting at, guys, is I, uh, da -da -da. oh, let me zoom out. You guys are staring at my ugly mug here. There we go. Um, okay, let me explain that one real quick. So, I wanted that 48. I wanted another zero turn. Um, I needed something that was 48 inch cut, fabricated deck, small package, I can get in that uh, tight areas. The reason um, for that is the stander had a 48 inch deck on it, but the ass of it, the frame of it was so wide, it was like 52, 52 and a half inches or something like that was the width of the actual machine. So the gates that I could get in that were 48 inches wide, I still couldn't take that mower in because even though the deck would fit through, the machine itself wouldn't fit through. So that's why I went with a smaller mower like that, a smaller frame mower. Um, I couldn't find it right away and then I finally found one. Um, my local dealer that sells Husqvarna and steel is what they specialize in. Um, I talked to a few friends of mine that have bought Husqvarna zero turns and they love them and they're much cheaper than a lot of the other zeros I paid. I think out the door, done everything on that machine, I paid $3,500 for it brand new. So that's a smoking deal for a, a zero turn with a 48 inch commercial deck. Um, it's got the 23 horsepower Vanguard Briggs engine. None of you guys have watched any of my videos before, you know that I prefer Kawasaki engines. It's just what I like. Some people like Briggs, some people like Kohler. So before people start leaving comments on here, oh, you should have gone with a Kohler or this or that. Um, and Kawasaki's my thing. That's what I like. Um, but that Briggs engine is, um, the Xmark Zero has a 19 horse Briggs Vanguard engine. Um, and that seems to do just fine with that engine. This machine's a lot lighter and has a 23 horse Briggs Vanguard. So I figured I'd be all right, which I've used it for about a week and a half now. I have like 27 hours on it. Um, and it seems to be doing perfectly fine. Uh, one issue I did have was uh, on startup, it was smoking a little bit. And then I found out it had almost three quarters of a quart of oil too much in it. Um, right from the factory so watch that guys if you buy a new mower check that oil it had too much it had nowhere to go so it was trying to push it through it was going past the valve seals things like that and, uh, and it was just smoking so once I drained that excess out it's been fine ever since um, but yeah so that's where I'm at now I did sell I sold the stander um, even there's there's a bunch of them on Craigslist in my area that they want like Shit, I don't know. They want 4,000 and up for them, and they look all beat up. They weren't taken care of. Mine was taken care of. I pressure wash my machines every week. Um, and I'm very meticulous on taking care of my equipment. So uh, mine was in really good shape, and those ones that want 4,000 and up that are all over Craigslist, they're 3,000, 3,500, 4,000 hours on them. Mine had just hit 1,400 hours. Um, so like I said, nice sold for 2,100. That's with the grass catcher, with the brand new tires, with the new spindles, with the gator blades, with everything I've done to it. Um, so the guy that bought it, uh, he got a really good deal. Really good deal on it. And uh, I stand behind everything I sell. I don't hack people like a lot of these guys do on Craigslist. I've been screwed so many times myself. Um, so I gave the guy my business card that bought it. I have a manual for it, but it was only on my computer. So uh, I told him when he gets home, email me, um, and then I'll email him back to manual, which I did. So and yeah, I've talked to him since. He seems to be really happy with it. Same thing with the button. I emailed them the manual too. They seem to be really happy with that. Um, so yeah, so it worked out good all the way around for the guys that bought the machines and the guy, or and the guy and me um, that sold them. Um, 
But uh, so I think actually what I'm gonna do, I think I'm gonna put that X mark on the back burner once I get it fixed. And uh, I think that one's gonna end up being a backup mower. I think I'm gonna go buy another one of these Husqvarna's. I really like it. Like I said, they're compact, you know, small frame, small, smaller tires. Um, they get in not everywhere I need them to get out, plus I still have the luxuries of having a commercial mower with a fabricated deck. So, um, so for me, I mean, I'm sure some guys prefer other things, but for me, it, it's working out all the way around. Um, and you guys have seen a lot of my bigger properties, this one being a good size one. But, uh, you know, I'm sure some guys will say, man, you need a bigger deck, you need a bigger deck. Well, I really don't, because... 48 is just a universal machine for me. Um, anything, you know, I, I have so many properties where it takes a little bit longer because I only have a 48, but they're still not taking that long. We're very efficient. Um, and it's, uh, but some properties, if I had anything bigger than a 48, it would just, it would just be a pain. It would just give me issues. So it's working out for me all the way around. But uh, enough of me rambling, I'm sure you guys don't want to look at my ugly mug all day and hear me talking, so um, I hope everybody's having a phenomenal season, and I hope everybody's in good health and everybody's families are well, and I am going to try to get some footage for you today, maybe a little bit tomorrow, and we'll get some videos posted up for you. Alright guys, enjoy. Alright guys, I want to show you something real quick. This is for all the naysayers. See what that says? FS56RC. Okay? It's a steel. There's another one right there. And I have another one in my garage at home. The reason I'm showing this to you guys is... This is a homeowner's model weed whacker. Okay? Now... Everybody says you got to go with an FS70, an FS90, FS whatever, okay, all these commercial models. Um, as a matter of fact, I think the 70 is still a homeowner's model, but either way, everyone says you got to go with these weed whackers. Well, I bought one of these last year, and these weed whackers have outperformed, outlasted, outdone maintenance-wise, required maintenance, than my commercial Echo weed whackers. Okay, my commercial Echo weed whackers were great, don't get me wrong, I mean they're really nice, they're really nice trimmers, but these steel model homeowner models have been amazing. These things run to there's no end, I have no problem going through thicker shit even with 85 or 90 line. Um, they just go. They just perform like there's no tomorrow. I love them. So this year I went back and I bought two more. So now I have three of them. Um, and they are phenomenal weed whackers. If any of you guys are looking and think, oh man, I gotta go get a commercial one. These weed whackers were 200 bucks a piece. Okay, at my dealer. That's not even at Home Depot. At my dealer, where dealer stuff's normally more, they were 200 bucks a piece. These things are phenomenal. Um, so if anybody's ever second guessing or wondering, don't, don't. We burn them up every day. Uh, 12, 10, 12 hours a day we run these weed whackers and just beat the hell out of them and they just keep going. Um, so, if any of you guys are wondering, there you go.